Nuclear fusion is the process where the center of two atoms are forced together so violently they fuse into heavier elements. In addition to forming new elements, this process also releases energy stored between individual subatomic molecules. This reaction is so efficient that only the complete annihilation of matter by combining it with antimatter is more energetic. If you need proof for how much energy this process can generate, you need look no further than our own sun, which is essentially nothing more than a giant nuclear fusion reactor. If humanity can unlock the secrets of nuclear fusion, then we can harness the process that keeps the stars alive and use it to generate power here on Earth. So, how does it work? Nuclear energy is the result of a battle between two of the fundamental forces of nature that occur in the center of an atom. This is the electromagnetic force, which causes likely charged protons to repel each other, and the strong nuclear force, that attracts protons and neutrons together through quantum tunneling. In the nucleus of an atom, the strong nuclear force overpowers the electromagnetic force and keeps likely charged protons together. But the nuclear force has a limited range, so at a distance, the electromagnetic force reaches out and repels like charges. The distance between the attraction from the nuclear force and the repulsion from the electromagnetic force is referred to as the column barrier. This barrier can be stronger or weaker depending on how many protons the nucleus contains. Hydrogen has a particularly low column barrier thanks to the fact that its nucleus is made up of a single proton. While this is great for reducing the energy barrier between two nuclei, it's not ideal for fusion since there are no neutrons available to hold the protons together. Fortunately, nature provides us a solution to this problem in the form of isotopes. Isotopes are versions of the same element that have extra neutrons. Hydrogen has two isotopes called deuterium, which has one neutron, and tritium, which has two. Like hydrogen, deuterium and tritium both only have one proton, giving them a low column barrier, but thanks to the extra neutrons, they are also able to fuse. The low column barrier and presence of neutrons is why most fusion reactors focus on deuterium and tritium or DT fusion. But even DT reactions require immense amounts of energy to be able to force the nuclei together. Most fusion reactors aim for an operating temperature of about 150 million degrees Celsius, which is 10 times hotter than the core of our sun. Fusion happens at a lower temperature in the sun due to the extreme pressures generated in the core. Since it's not feasible to generate these pressures here on Earth, our reactors have to run at higher temperatures. At these temperatures, the fuel turns into a hot soup of exposed nuclei and free electrons called a plasma. In a fusion reaction, the plasma has enough energy for the exposed nuclei to overcome the column barrier, which allows the nuclear force to violently smash the nuclei together, forming helium while releasing energy and neutrons. Fusion reactors such as tokamaks control the plasma with strong magnetic fields generated from superconducting coils. The magnetic confinement of the plasma serves several functions. For one, the magnetic fields isolate the plasma from the walls of the reactor. This prevents energy from being lost and allows the plasma to reach higher temperatures. The magnetic fields also compress the plasma, which allows the reactor to produce more power at the same temperature. This is because the energy released from a fusion reaction increases with the square of pressure, so doubling the pressure means quadrupling the energy output. Finally, the magnetic fields are used to stabilize the plasma, which is one of the most challenging parts of nuclear fusion thanks to the complicated science of fluid dynamics. Plasma stability limits how long a reactor can run, which translates to how much energy is produced. As a result, a lot of research is focused on stabilizing plasma. Thanks to this research, reaction times have increased from being measured in milliseconds to the current world record of 6.5 minutes achieved by the Tor Super Tokamak. Confinement time is so important that it, along with plasma temperature and density, make up the three metrics used to judge fusion reactions, called the triple product. The triple product serves as a good metric since temperature, density, and confinement time all directly relate to how much energy a fusion reaction can produce. The JT-60 tokamak, located in Japan, holds the world record for the highest triple product, but because it only uses deuterium as fuel, it does not hold the record for the highest energy output. That honor goes to the Jet Tokamak, which was able to generate 16 megawatts of power after consuming 24 megawatts to heat the plasma, giving it a Q value of 0.67. The Q is used to denote the ratio between power output and input. A Q value of 1 represents a break-even event where enough energy is produced to compensate for heating the plasma. Scientists are hopeful that ITER will be the first fusion reactor to achieve and surpass a break-even event. ITER has been designed to reach a Q value of 10, meaning it will produce 10 times more energy than is consumed heating the plasma. 
This is an ambitious but necessary goal toward achieving a nuclear-powered future. But why invest so much time and money into fusion when we already have other renewables? Well, having more tools in your toolbox is never a bad idea. Solar and wind are both fantastic technologies that are getting better every single year, but they both have inherent limitations that can be supplemented with nuclear fusion. For one, nuclear fusion works day or night, sun or shine, and in any climate. Because of this, power storage is not an issue unlike with solar and wind. Geothermal and hydroelectric also don't require power storage, but are only viable in very specific geographic conditions. In addition, solar, wind, and hydroelectric also destroy habitats because they require large amounts of land to be cleared out or rivers to be dammed, whereas fusion power requires the same footprint as current power plants. So fusion has advantages over other renewables, but so does nuclear fission, which is a technology we have today. Why invest so much time and money into fusion when we already have fission? First off, just for clarification, fission is the opposite process of fusion, where a heavier nuclei splits into lighter ones. This process is what today's nuclear power plants are based on. One reason for preferring fusion power plants is safety. Fusion reactions only happen under very specific conditions, and because of this, a runaway reaction isn't possible. If, for example, an earthquake were to disrupt the power to a fusion reactor, the loss of magnetic confinement would immediately shut the reactor down. In addition to being safer while the reactor is functioning, the long-term effects of the radioactive waste produced from a fusion reaction is also safer for the environment. Fusion does still generate radioactive waste due to structural components of the reactor being constantly exposed to high-energy neutrons. Over time, this leads to the components themselves becoming mildly radioactive. But just like soft drink brands, not all radioactive waste is created equal. The waste produced from nuclear fusion will not be around anywhere near as long as the waste produced from nuclear fission. Another ambitious goal from ITER is to be able to completely recycle their nuclear waste in 100 years. This is a huge improvement over the thousands of years that it takes for fission waste to become safe. These reasons, along with several others, are why nuclear fusion is preferred over nuclear fission. But that's not to say that nuclear fusion doesn't have some downsides. One of these downsides is that we use tritium as fuel. Tritium is radioactive and difficult to contain. It's able to make its way through rubber and plastic, as well as some types of concrete and steel. These properties are bad enough on their own, but they are made even worse by the fact that tritium is an isotope of hydrogen, meaning it can form radioactive tritionated water, or T2O. This might not be too much of an issue, since tritium's relatively short half-life of 12 and a half years makes it difficult for significant quantities to build up in the atmosphere. Of course, this property also means that there isn't much tritium laying around for us to use. Fortunately, there is a rather elegant solution to this problem. One of the functional parts of a fusion reactor, called the blanket, is responsible for absorbing high-energy neutrons, transforming their kinetic energy into heat that can be used to generate power. If the blanket is made of lithium, the neutrons will slam into the lithium atoms, transforming them into tritium and helium, generating fuels the reactor runs. As for deuterium, the other isotope of hydrogen that's used as fuel, it's completely safe and there are about 30 grams of the stuff available in every liter of seawater, making our supply virtually unlimited. The promise of clean cheap energy, virtually unlimited fuel, and improved safety make nuclear fusion the holy grail of power generation. A lot of progress is being made in the field, but it's also important to remember that it relies on complex science that is going to take a lot of time and money to develop. Over-ambitious claims about when nuclear fusion will be ready have already developed a negative stigma that the technology is always just around the corner. But the idea of taking the same process that powers the stars and bringing it down to us here on Earth seems like it's worth the investment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Videos like these take large amounts of time to make, but I do it because I love it. As a small channel, gaining viewership is very difficult, so if you want to help out, please consider sharing this video anywhere where it's appropriate. Subscribing also helps too. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your internet going experience.